Alright, let's stick this down here. Okay. Uh, let's start with uh, lesson 56. Okay. Okay, we're ready to go. So um, I'm just gonna try to do through these pretty quick. What I did, let's see, on 56, yeah, I did start with the, cause one of these lessons, I did some of the problems, right, 58. Um, I did some of the examples he did, um, like within the lesson, I thought that would be better than just doing the practice. So anyway, here we go. Uh, 56, it says simplify, and we're going to simplify the sine of 2x and the secant of x. This is real kind of the same stuff that we've been doing the last couple of weeks. But it's good to practice it. And it just says to simplify. Let me just write that up here. Alright, so simplify this thing. Well, when you see like a sine and a secant, oh, I see a double angle thing too, don't you? And you got the little chart in front of you. Yeah, that's going to be really helpful because, man, there's so many. Can you imagine having to memorize all these things? That would be pretty tough, wouldn't it? So we'll just take a look at the chart and um, see some things. Um, first of all, the sine of 2x. Do we have something that we can kind of simplify a little bit with the sine of 2x? This is a 2. This is like doubling this angle, right? x is an angle, and the 2 doubles the angle. So if you look at the double angle identity... Yep, 2 sine x, cosine x. Good. So I'm going to take that sine of 2x and put a 2 out in front of it and make it sine x, cosine x. It's the same exact thing, right? So that equals that. Does that make sense? Now, what do you think we're going to do with secant? We're going to keep this secant if we want to simplify this? Now, let's make it what? What's the secant? Good. 1 over the cosine. Now, if, um, uh, we'll just do it like that. Could think ahead a little bit, but I'm just going to do it like this, just to not mess you up. And then the cosine, you can't really deal with that. And two times the cosine, that's really not a double angle thing, right? It's not doubling the x, is it? So we'll just leave it to cosine x. All right. So let's simplify this just a little bit. If you look at this up top here, forget the bottom right now. Let's just simplify the top. So I've got a cosine times one over the cosine. What happens to those? Can't each other out. Okay, and so what am I left with? I'm left with 2 sine x, oops, with the assignment here, over uh, 2 cosine x, correct? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, now what happens here? It's pretty easy. 2 is cancel. And sine over cosine, that's one of our things that you need to memorize. It's not on your list. I don't think it is. No. Well, what is the sine over the cosine? It's the same thing as the tangent. Good. It's the same thing as the tangent. And that's it. So this crazy looking thing right here is exactly the same as just taking the tangent of whatever that angle is. Alright? Pretty crazy, isn't it? Let's do another. We okay with that? These aren't so bad now, are they? At first, when we were doing these, you know, a week or two ago, I probably thought, oh my goodness, I'll never be able to do these. But after you get the hang of it, right, you see the secant, you know, you change it to one over the cosine. You see tangent sometimes, you change it to sine over cosine. After you do that kind of stuff, not that bad. Well, after saying it's not that bad, <laughs> wait till this one. So, uh, 1 plus the sine of x. And we're going to multiply it by the secant of x minus the tangent of x. See, the other one was just a warm up, just to wake you up a little bit this morning. This one, it's basically straight up algebra with a little bit of trig mixed in. Um, so let's take a look. Um, what do you think? If you've got two parentheses, they're being multiplied times each other, what word comes to mind when you see something like that? Foil, right. First outside, inside, last. Okay. So let's go ahead and just do that. Let's just foil this thing. I, don't, I mean, I guess you could have done this. You could have taken the secant right here and gone one over the cosine. You could have taken the tangent and gone sine over the cosine. And then taking that and, sub and multiplied it by that, I guess that's that would be an okay way to do it. Um, but I looked to see how the guy in the book did it, right? And he went ahead and distributed. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's do the foil method right here. So we do it to the first, so that's going to be secant x. Then the outside is minus the tangent x, right? Because it's just being multiplied by one. And then the inside will be sine secant sine x secant x, and then the last would be minus, right, because positive times negative, and then sine tangent. 
sine x tangent x. Okay. Now, what we could do, um, we could simplify a couple things, but if you look at this, um, let's take a look at this thing right here. Sometimes on these, you have to look ahead a little bit to figure out what approach you want to take, right? You might you might start off on one approach and then kind of come to a roadblock and you're like, eh, I better back up and try another thing. So sometimes it's good to kind of look ahead, and that's the hardest part about this is finding the, the correct approach, right, to do this. Um, I see this as a tangent, don't you? And I see this. This is secant or sine times the secant. Now again, what's the secant? Well, it's one over the cosine, isn't it? So watch what I can do. This is a little bit of sleight of hand. So watch what I'll cancel out this, but it's one over the cosine, which means I could just go sine over cosine, couldn't I? Isn't that the same thing? Right? Because I just get rid of the secant, but what's the secant? It's one over the cosine. So the sine times one over the cosine is just the sine over the cosine. You don't have to do it like that, but the reason I did that is because do you recognize sine over cosine? What is that? It's just regular tangent, isn't it? Now, again, when I say look ahead, look what you got right here. You got a minus tangent and a plus tangent. What's going to happen? We're going to cancel each other out. That's always nice, isn't it? When stuff cancels out. I love that, don't you? Yeah, so watch. That will cancel with that. So, what are you left with? You're left with, we'll just clean it up a little bit secant x minus the sine of tangent x. And you could have done, you could have taken like the tangent and made it sine over cosine right away. You could have done it all in that same step if you wanted to. Right? But we we'll just do it little chunks. So now, what about this thing right here? Do you see anything you can do with that? Well, it's a secant, so what do you think I can do with that? Yeah, let's make it one over the cosine. Let's see what's going to happen with this. And then I've got sine times the tangent. Tell you what, let's take this and just kind of off to the side. I'm not going to put it in the step. I'll just do it off to the side. If I go to sine times the tangent, so sine of x times the tangent. If I break down tangent, what do I get? I get sine of the cosine. Okay, so what's this going to be? Sine times sine. What's sine times sine? It's anything times sine itself. Squared. Sine squared, right? Okay, and that's going to be over the cosine. Now again, that's kind of nice because this is, I got a common denominator now, don't I? So I could rewrite this just one minus the sine squared over just one cosine. See that? Just subtraction. I've got common denominators, so I just put it over the one denominator and I write it like this. So we just uh, circle that and then we're done. Now we have. Look at your trig identities. You have something, and it's under, I don't know why they put it in this title, but it's under the title of reciprocal identities, or the, what do we call that, the Pythagorean identity? Mm -hmm. I think when we first did that, remember that? So watch, the sine squared plus the cosine squared. Now it's not written in your chart exactly one minus sine squared, but it is written like this. Kind of the Pythagorean identity, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, so is there, yeah, is there any way to get this thing, or I should say this thing right here, to look like this? Yeah. Well, you wouldn't subtract the cosine. All you do is subtract the sine squared. Watch, if I take the sine squared and I subtract it, then I got this right here, don't I? And what's this equal to? What's one minus? Yeah, what's one minus the sine squared? It's the cosine squared, isn't it? So, one minus sine squared is the same thing as the cosine squared. Does that make sense to you? So I took this identity right here, right, and I kind of just rearranged it to get it to look like this, right? So even though you don't have to memorize these identities. You need to be familiar with them, so you're like, oh yeah, when you see this, you're like, sine squared, yeah, I got a sine squared somewhere in my huge chart of identities. And you go in there and you look at it, and you're like, oh yeah, look at that. If I just subtract the sine squared, I can make that a cosine squared, and now it works out real nice. Because look, what's the cosine squared over the cosine? Yeah, one of these cosines cancels with one of those cosines, 
And so you're just left with a cosine. So it simplified pretty nice, didn't it? From that crazy mess right there, all that is the same thing as just a cosine of x. Having fun yet? <laughs> you're still waiting, aren't you? So have some fun. <laughs> So it, uh, I mean, it takes a little, it takes a little practice to get used to doing that. And you see what I mean? You kind of have to look ahead a little bit. Like when I saw this sine times the secant, when I saw secant, I'm thinking ahead. Oh yeah, that's over the cosine. Oh, sine over cosine. I kind of saw all that in my head, knowing that it was going to cancel with this. And so that's kind of how I need to, to go about that. Okay. Let's do another one. Um, C. This is practice C. So it's the sine of 2x. Hmm. That's a double angle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So as soon as I saw that, I recognized something. And this is 1 minus the cosine of 2x. Hmm. Do I have a 1 minus the cosine? Yeah. Or something yeah, like that in there? Identity. Reciprocal identity. Do I have a cosine of 2x? It's not. Oh, the sine of 2x? Yeah. Is there a trying double to look? angle and a reciprocal? Yeah, there is. Like they do for Let me pause this and find it. <laughs> the middle one says cosine of 2x, and it's equal to actually three different things. Is that the one you were looking at, or were you looking at? Uh, looking you were looking at the reciprocal one, I think. Yeah, so yeah. you could. But this is not squared, though. See, that's what you're looking. You're you're looking at oh, it as okay. a square. This is not squared. This is a cosine of two times x. So you're <coughs> doubling this angle, and that's a double angle identity with the cosine. So if you look at it, there's three double angle identities: one with the sine of two x, one with the cosine of two x, and one with the tangent of two x. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we're going to do is we're going to use both of those right here. So what is the sine of 2x on that double angle? We did that a little earlier, didn't we? 2 sine x cosine x. And then this one right here, 1 minus cosine of 2x. You have three things that you could put down, don't you? You could put down cosine squared minus sine squared, 2 cosine squared minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared. Right? Um, so how do you know which one to use? Uh, it's hard to say, <laughs> to tell you the truth how you know which one you're going to use. You could probably use any of them and it would still eventually work out. I'll just show you the one that I chose. Right? Um, I chose to use the bottom one, the 1 minus 2 sine squared. Um, you could probably still do it the other way. You could probably use that middle one, that 2 uh, cosine squared minus 1, and it would still work out. You just got to pick one and then go with it. Right? That's what I'm going to do. But what is this? This is 1 minus the cosine of 2x. So again, I'm going to replace um, the cosine of 2x with what I know it is. And what is it? It's 1 minus 2 sine squared. See what I just did? See where that 1 is? That 1 is because of this problem right there. And then the minus is because of the problem. And then what I did is I took the cosine of 2x and I turned it into this thing right here. Where did I get that? Look in the chart. Okay, it's one of my identities. Does that make a little bit of sense? All right, so now what we're going to do is let's distribute this negative. This negative is outside the parentheses, so let's distribute that through and let's see what we get. So the top doesn't change. And let's look at the bottom. It's going to be 1 minus 1. And then you're distributing the negative, aren't you? So you're going to get a plus. 2 sine squared of x. See what I did? All I did was just distribute the negative. Because the 1's not being distributed. Right? It's just a 1 minus, and then it's minus 1 minus a negative, which is plus 2 sine squared. Now, what do you like about this? Yeah, the two 1's go, don't they? It's 1 minus 1, which is 0, so that cancels out. And so now let's write it a little bit nicer without that 1. So the thing I like about doing these things, it starts off looking real complicated, and we're trying to make it easier and easier. And um, every step you do is one step closer to making it look just a little bit nicer. I kind of like that. 
like cleaning your room. At first you hate it, you know, and then you start doing it and you start saying, hey, this is starting to look pretty good, right? And at the end, you're like, wow, glad I did that. That's kind of, I don't know, that just popped in my head, I don't know. <laughs> but that's kind of how I feel, though. You ever feel like that? Maybe, maybe not. All right, I'll shut up. I'll keep going. <laughs> okay, so the twos cancel. What else cancels here? One of the signs, right? So one of those signs goes with one of those signs, and look what you have. You got cosine over the sine. And what do we know cosine over the sine to be? Not tangent. What's tangent? Sine over cosine. So what's the inverse of a tangent? Cotangent. Good. So cosine over the sine is the cotangent. And there you go. Again, so that crazy thing right there just simplifies to be the cotangent of x. Let's do another one. This is a little bit different. This says find the exact value. So you're not just um, throwing this into a calculator. That's what they don't want you to do, okay? So when they say find the exact value, um, you know, it could come out to a square root, could come out to a fraction. They just don't want a, a decimal. So they want you to find the exact value of the cosine of 2x if the cosine of x is equal to 1 over 5. Now, you're not just going to... Um, you're not just going to put this one-fifth in here and say two times a fifth, which is two-fifths. Because do you know, is there any way that you could figure out the exact value of the cosine of two over five? No, it's not one of our special things, is it? It's not a 30, 60, 90. It's not a 45. It's none of those. So you can't just do that. It would be nice if you could, right? Just plug it in. But you can't really do that. You can put it in a calculator, but if you put it in the calculator, you're not going to get an exact value. So what you have to do, this is a double angle, isn't it? Two times x. So look at the cosine of 2x. You've got several different choices, don't you? But there's only one choice that you really want to use. Because you got three choices. You see it? That's that thing with that little bracket thing. That little brace. The middle one. Why the middle one? Not the other two. Right, because the middle one's only cosine, and the other two have a sine in it. Do you know what the sine of x is in this problem? No, so you'd be stuck, wouldn't you? So you can only use the one with the cosine. Does that make sense on... How how you know which one you use? Okay, so cosine of two x is going to be two cosine squared minus one. All right. So this, what does this do? This is not squaring the x. This is taking whatever the cosine of x is and squaring it. Okay, and then subtracting one from it. So watch what we're going to do. Um, we're going to go two times. Now, what is the cosine of x? One fifth, isn't it? Okay, because right there, the cosine of x is one fifth. But what are we doing to that one fifth? Squaring, squaring it. So I'm going to put a squared right there. And I'm going to put a minus one. So now our trig is all done. Now it's just a matter of doing the arithmetic and figuring this out. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go two times. What are we squaring? We're not squaring the two, are we? We're just squaring what? The one fifth. And what what do you get when you square one fifth? One over twenty five. Good. Okay, so it's one over 25. So we're going to do that multiplication first and then we're going to subtract a 1. Make sure you do the order of operations. This is what order of operations is really important. Remember that, my dear, please excuse my name, Sally. Remember that? So you always do multiplication first before you do addition subtraction. That was one of the first things you learned, wasn't it, back in Algebra 1? Oh, you use it all the time. I mean, you probably didn't realize how important it was when you first learned it, but, but it really is. So what do we have here? We got 2 over 25 minus, I could put a 1 here, but what's my denominator? One. So how am I going to rewrite 1? Uh, I want to write it. Yeah, you got it. I'm going to write it with a denominator of 25, so it's going to be 25 over 25. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Anything over itself is 1, right? And so you want to put it over 25 to have a common denominator. And now you work that out. 2 minus 25 is negative 23 over 25. And that is an exact answer. Okay. Now, if I stuck that into a calculator, I'd probably get some decimal, right? And it might repeat or something like that. I don't even know if it does. But um, that's how you want to write the answer, just like that. That's not so bad, is it? No. All right, let's keep moving. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through all three. And I, I know I've said this for the last few weeks. If I don't get to the end, I'll try to put that on YouTube and send it to you. Okay. I think I got everything set up now. Everything's good to go with all my uh, technology here.
and I think I can actually make it work this time. So I don't want to rush too much, but I do need to get through quite a bit of this. All right, I'm going to find out what that thing is equal to. This is our practice D. I don't know if you remember back, probably algebra 1, algebra 2, we did stuff when you squared things in here. Can I just go sine squared minus cosine squared? Watch, if I was going to do this, is this, can I just like distribute the square and go a squared plus b squared? I'll put a question mark right there. Let's try, let's put some numbers in, let's see if we can. So I'll put a 3 in it. Make it real easy, right? So if this is true, big if, so you kind of have a feeling of where I'm going with this, right? Mm -hmm. If this is true, then if I go 3 squared plus 2 squared, that should be the correct answer, shouldn't it? If this was true, mm -hmm. right? So what is that? 9 plus 4 is what? 13? So is this 13? Mm -hmm. No. Nah. What would you do for this? You would go 3 plus 2, which is 5. I'll, put a, I'll do that, okay? So you know it's not right. So I would go 3 plus 2, which is 5, and then I would square it. Again, order of operations, right? Do it in parentheses first, then do your exponents, right? Please excuse. Got it? And that's 25. So your real answer is 25. So can you square stuff inside like that? No, you can't. But what are you doing when you're squaring something? You're multiplying it, what? By itself. By itself. Okay? So how am I going to have to write this? If I want to multiply all that stuff in parentheses by itself, I'm going to have to write it like this. Does that make sense? Isn't that this thing multiplied by itself? Sine minus cosine times itself. So I cannot just go sine squared minus cosine squared. I have to write it like this. And that's very, very important um, you know, in so much of algebra. Um, is to make sure you, you cannot, there is no property for distributing exponents. Okay, there is no, the only distributive property is for multiplication, right? So if I had a 3 times x plus 2, I could distribute, right? Because the 3 is being multiplied. Exponents, there is no distributive property for exponents, okay? And that's a common mistake many, many people make every year I teach this, okay? Everybody makes, not everybody, but so many people make that mistake. Um, you have to be reminded once in a while. You remember doing anything like this? Like in a, this is a probably a big algebra two topic. Maybe, might have even done a little bit of it at the beginning of this year in this course. All right, so enough of that. Let's take this now and figure out what we can do. I got two parentheses multiplied times each other. I got minuses in both of them. So what do you think I can do? You already said that word earlier. What's the word? Foil. Foil. Very good. Okay, just making sure you're awake. So um, you're going to FOIL this thing. So let's FOIL it. So first outside, inside, last. Let's do the first, sine times sine, which is sine squared. With me on that? Okay. And then you do the outside. That's a positive sine, negative cosine. So it's going to be negative sine times cosine. Let's do the inside. A negative times a positive. That's negative again. And it's cosine times sine. Or since this is written sine, cosine, you just want to keep it in the same order. Might make it look a little bit better. That doesn't bother you, does it? Instead of cosine sine, make it sine cosine. And then one more, negative times negative, which is positive, and it's cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared. Let me get rid of all this mess. Okay. Now let's simplify this just a little bit. So I've got sine squared. Oh, I see something I'm going to do right now, don't you? Sine squared plus cosine squared, do you remember what that's equal to? One, right. So do you want to just get rid of it right now? Let's do that. Okay. I see sine squared plus cosine squared. Uh, it's not getting rid of it. It doesn't cancel, right? It turns it into a one, though. Now, what about this stuff inside there? It's negative this minus the same thing. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like negative two minus two. What's negative two? Uh, I, let's not even use numbers. What's negative x minus x? negative 2x. So what's negative sine cosine minus sine cosine? Negative what? 2 sine cosine. Does that make sense? Okay. And does this look familiar to you? 
what is that? That is the, one of the double angles. That's one of the double angles, that's right. And so we recognize it. Again, you don't have to memorize them, but you should recognize them because sometimes they pop up and you're like, oh, that's one of those. And then you look on your chart to see what it's equal to. And what is that? Uh, that's right. So that's 1 minus the sine of 2x. And you can't really do anything with that. There is no identity that simplifies that. You just keep it like one that. Choice. And that's one of our choices. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even put the choices down. I just started from scratch. But yeah, that's one of our choices. That's nice. When it's multiple choice. Sometimes it's tricky, though, isn't it? Multiple choice. Sometimes they give you something really close and you think it's that, you know. <laughs> but um, I like to work these as if it, there was no multiple choice and just find it myself. Okay, enough of that. You can always go back and review it if you need to. Um, what color? Let's use this green one. Oh, look at this crazy thing. Um, it's been a long time since we've done one of these. That greatest integer function. Mm -hmm. Remember doing that? Okay, yeah. yeah. Like, they make these problems. You need to remember that? <laughs> yeah. Let me do this. Now they put the <laughs> INT in front of it, and then they put a parenthesis. <coughs> Excuse me. So if they put an INT in front of it, I'll show you another way that I usually see in the books, but they put INT for integer, greatest integer function. So if I said like 3.7. To one. What's the greatest integer function? What that means is, what is the largest integer that's less than this number? What's the biggest integer, no decimals, that's less than this number right here? Three. Okay. So you don't you don't necessarily look at it and say, oh, I rounded up. Okay. What is the largest integer that's less than this actual number? So if you look on your number line, right? Here's your number line. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Where does this lie? This lies right in here somewhere, right? So what do we look for for this greatest integer function? You look for the whole number. I shouldn't say whole number because it could be negative as well, okay? You look for the integer that's to the left of wherever that number is. So it would be a three. Does that make sense? Okay, so sometimes you'll see it like this in brackets like this. And this bracket means the same exact thing. It's just the notation is a little bit different. Okay? Does that make sense? So now, let's take a look at this. Let's, here's our, uh, I'm not going to read the whole problem for you. You can read the problem. But it's um, C of T. They give you this formula, don't they? And then they put INT, then parentheses T, that T is for time, plus 9.99. You don't have to know where this formula comes from. You don't have to derive the formula. They just give it to you, right? And they say, I don't have my book in front of me. What's what's the deal with this? What's the uh, topic? The, what's the, the C of T? The new play, as you get a cell phone. Oh, that's a cell of phone. phone the cost of the phone. All right, and the cost of the phone. What's the cost of the phone? <coughs> or the, the total cost? Uh, the the 125.45. What is that? What do they say that is? Uh, the T is the time in minutes. Okay, and what's the 121.45? Uh, minutes. That's minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So what they're doing is they basically are rounding down for your minutes, okay? It's 0.45. So no matter what this is, they're always taking it to the minute that is below, you know, whatever minute you actually talk. Does that make sense? So what we're going to do is um, do this. We're going to put a 0.19, and we're going to go INT for the greatest integer function of 121.45 plus 9.99. Okay. So here's the key to this whole problem. This is basically a real simple problem, even though it looks complicated. It's just plug and chug, right? You just plug stuff into your formula. You got to know what to plug in, but you plug this in for your time. That's how many minutes you talk on a cell phone plan, whatever. Okay, you put it in for t for the time, but you got to know what that is right there. Now, again, remember the cell phone company, they're not billing you for the 0.45, they're only billing you for what? The 121. Does that make sense? Okay, it doesn't matter if this was like 0.7 or 0.8 or 0.9, you still always take it down to the lower integer number. Okay. It's not like you're just. It's not like a regular rounding problem. So you go point uh, nineteen, 
and this is being multiplied by 121 and then plus 9.99 and I'll let you put that in your calculator and you get 32.98 and that is money because the C represents the cost it says what is the cost for that many minutes okay that's what that C of T means does that make sense C is the cost per not per minute but the cost for all the minutes that you used and so that C is cost and um, that's how much it costs to talk 121 minutes on that particular plan. Do you know where the uh, money figure actually comes from? I do not. Where does it come from? Uh, in Spain, around when they were coming over to America, or kind of around that time, uh -huh. on the Spanish coin there were two flags and a weird, a curvy, I forget what they're called. Mm -hmm. But they just took those two pieces and merged them together, which made the dollar symbol. So the Spaniards are the ones that came up with our dollar symbol? Mm -hmm. And they don't even use the dollar. Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. They just took one of their coins, and that's how they made the dollar. Oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I never had any ah, idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow, very cool. All right. Learn some history in here. That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go to. Watch Roman history show. Yeah, I, I love watching the history show. Learning about stuff, but I missed that one. All right, so we're doing um, we're doing all the practice problems from 57, lesson 57. All right. Um, what was this one? Was this the half angle, or yeah, there was half angle stuff in this wasn't there? Angle and product of some Um, yeah, we'll get through this. I. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get to 58 for our time, but I'll put that on YouTube. I hope. I keep saying that. <laughs> never, you guys even ever check to see if it's on there? I do. Do you? Okay. I'm thinking, ah, oh, they probably don't even care anyway. <laughs> All right, but I will. I really will try my best to um, put 58 on there. And if whatever we don't finish here, hopefully we'll finish 57. If I would be quiet. There's some problems. All right, again, we're simplifying. This is kind of the same thing. This is really not even new stuff. Well, that top one should be cubed, not squared, sorry. Cube. And that's squared, and then we got a plus secant squared. All right. Well, again, if you get in a jam and you're not really sure what to do, if you see cosecant and secant, what should you always do, basically? Simplify. Yeah, simplify them. So what would you take your cosecant and make it? Uh, one, one over one. the sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this would be cubed since the sec or the cosecant is cubed. And that's being multiplied. Notice the top is multiplied, the bottom is being added. Big difference, okay? And the secant is going to be 1 over the cosine, right? So we'll just keep it like that. We'll mess around with that in a little bit. Um, let's do the bottom. So let's change the cosecant. Now this is cosecant squared, so this is going to be 1 over sine squared. Can you see that color? What does that look like? Oh, you can barely see that. Let me change that so we can see. Let me know. Because it's kind of bright in there. Um, let's go yellow. How's that? Is that better? Okay, <laughs> good. Um, and then uh, plus 1 over the cosine squared. Alright. You say, wait a minute. I thought we are simplifying. Is that looks worse <laughs> than what it did right here. Alright, I agree with you. But um, I think we can do some stuff with this. Um, really, what's the only thing we can do to this top stuff right here? Multiply. Yeah, just multiplying together. So I get 1 over, and there's really nothing that I can do as far as combining them. Let's just write them right next to each other. My guess is something's probably going to cancel out eventually, don't you think? Yeah. Usually it does. <laughs> All right. Eventually. All right. So that looks a little bit better. All right, what about the bottom one? Now the bottom is a little bit more involved because this is an addition. So what do you have to do when you're adding fractions? Find a common denominator. So what would it be if I had a sine squared cosine squared? Just multiplying together, right? What if you had like a 5 and a 7? What would your common denominator be? Uh, or 35. 35. So what would you do to that 5 and 7? Just multiply them together, right? So if there's nothing in common with them, you just multiply them together. So sine squared cosine squared. Right? Now, here's the deal. You've got to figure out what the numerator is going to be. I can't just put a 1 plus a 1 now, can I? 
I changed this. I multiplied this by a cosine squared, didn't I? Mm -hmm. So what am I going to have to do to the top? I'm going to have to multiply that by a cosine squared. And that's what I did up there. I'm going to put a plus. Now, what would you do to this cosine squared to get this denominator? Multiply it by the sine squared. So you do that to the top. One times the sine squared is just a sine squared. Hmm, I see something. I like it. What do you see? What 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 goes what goes away? Oh, the uh, the part on top. Yeah, it's that trig. It's not trig. It's that Pythagorean theorem one, right? That Pythagorean identity, and they don't list it as Pythagorean, but that's what it is, right? It's, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and so that's equal to one. So this whole thing right there is just a one. Ah, now it is getting a little bit better, isn't it? I knew it would eventually. All right, that's good. So what are we gonna do? Let's do this. Let's go. Um, <coughs> yeah, if you want, let's just do that. Let's um. Um, this is one over sine squared cosine squared, right? So uh, I tell you what, look, I hate to do too much in one step. So let's do you what? Know, let's um. Need some more room. So let's move that down to like that. All right. So there's the top now divided by the reciprocal of this. And what's the reciprocal of 1 over? Well, it would just be sine squared cosine squared, wouldn't it? What I was going to do, I was, I was just going to take this stuff and replace the 1 with it and put it right on top. But I just thought I'd show you all the little steps so you wouldn't get confused on what I was doing. Alright, and this is going to be sine cubed. Now it's real simple, isn't it? It's real basic. So what happens here? I got sine squared, I got sine cubed. So that means I have two sines up here and three sines down here. So two of these cancels with two of these. So I'm just left with one on the bottom, one sine on the bottom. From mm -hmm. same thing here. This cosine will cancel out with one of these cosines. I have a cosine on the top. So what do I have? I got one cosine on the top. I got one sine on the bottom. What is that? If I simplify it. It's the cotangent, and I'm done. So it actually did get easier, didn't it? From the original. Are you liking that stuff any better now than you used to? I kind of like it. Now, there's a letter B practice. It's pretty much like what we just did. I'm not going to waste our time again and, and do it one more time. I think we've done plenty of those. So let's go to um, C. I did C one way, and I didn't read the and I look and I got to the end. I'm like, that's not what it looks like. And I looked at it. I'm like, I didn't read the instructions because they're pretty specific on the instructions. They say use the half angle identity to get the exact value. And so what I did, I just did. Remember that sum. Remember, like if you had what was that one angle we did before, like 75 degrees. We made it like the cosine of 30 plus 45, remember that? And then we broke it down and all that kind of stuff. That's what I did at first. Um, but this says use the half angle um, identity. Use the half angle identity. Identity. All right. To find the exact value, again, we're going exact. We're not just throwing it into a calculator. The exact value of the cosine of 195. We don't need the parentheses there, but anyway, that's what they did. So let's look at our half angle identity. We haven't done any of that. Now this is cosine, so let's write down the cosine half angle identity. So it's it's real crazy looking, isn't it? Got a plus or minus. Got a big old square root. And you got one plus cosine on the top, and you got two on the bottom. Right? So again, this is half of this angle. So how in the world am I going to do that? Am I going to take half of 195? Is that what I want to do? Well, remember, this isn't necessarily the x. Because we're not going to actually take half of 195. Because half of because that would be the cosine of half of 195. 
I want to take half of some number that's going to give me 195. So I'm going to take I want to take half of some number that's going to give me 195. So how would I find that number? By and which is two. Good. Okay. So you multiply by two. So really, 195 times two is my x. Because if I take half of 195 times 2, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 195. Does that make sense? So you're not taking half of 195. You're taking half of 195 times 2, which is what, 390? Yep. So it's 390. So it's going to be watch this. It's going to be the cosine of 1 half of 390. Would you agree that that's true? Half of 390 is 195. So I'm trying to find the cosine of 195, and half of 390 is 195. So now what I can do is now I can throw that 390 in for x right here, because that is my x, isn't it? You see that? 390 is my x. So I can take that 390 and plug it in for x right here, and then just simplify using that formula. All right, so I'm going to put plus or minus, big old square root, and... Um, so it's going to be 1 plus the cosine of 390, not 195, but 390, and that ultimately gives me 2. Now again, we want to find an exact value. I'm not going to take cosine of 390 stick it into a calculator. Let's think about where 390 actually is. Yes, it would be. So you go all the way to 360, and you go 30 more. Okay, so that's a 30 degree angle. And what is the cosine when you have a 30 degree angle right there? Good. So square root of 3 over 2. Does that make sense? So, there is one little trick at the end of this. I'm just looking at it to make sure I get there. So, we got plus or minus square root. I'm going to go 1 plus cosine of 390 is the square root of 3 over 2. And that will give you two. I have to do a little bit of arithmetic here. I just got to simplify this stuff inside that big old square root. So um, I'm going to keep the square root here. So it's one plus this, or watch this. I'm going to take that one. Since I'm adding fractions here, I'm going to take that one and turn it into two over two. And so now, what is it? It's two plus the square root of three over two, correct? Yeah. That's what the top is, but I still have to divide it by two. But instead of putting over 2, let's figure that out. Dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over 2. Yeah, so I'm going a little quick so you can always go back and, and look at it. I've got to multiply these together. So the top is multiplied by 1. That doesn't change. So multiply the bottom. 2 times 2 is 4. Almost done. I need to put plus minus on there. Now watch this. We're getting close. Put a plus or minus right here. It's going to be 2 plus square root of 3 over 4. But I want to take the square root of this. So if I take the square root of the top, I can't really simplify that. So that's just going to be 2 plus the square root of 3. But I can take the square root of the bottom. What's the square root of 4? It's just a plain whole number 2, isn't it? See what I did? I took the square root of the top, and I took the square root of the bottom. Remember that rule, don't you? Like if I had x over y, that's the same thing as the square root of x over the square root of y. That's really what I applied right here. And I took the square root of 4, which is just 2. So you'd think, okay, it's plus or minus this thing right here. But you got to be careful because the question says, what is the cosine of 195? I've got two things here. I've got a plus this number, and I've got a negative this number. But let's think about where 195 is. What quadrant is 195 degrees in? The third, because if I go 180, and I just go, what, 15 more, right? Mm -hmm. And so that right there. So the cosine is this crazy number right here, okay? It's the square root of 2 plus square root of 3 all over 2, or whatever that number is, okay? Mm -hmm. So the cosine is negative here, though, isn't it? You see that? So at 195 degrees, the cosine is negative. So I'm not going to use the positive, am I? So what am I going to use? I'm just going to use the negative part of that. And that's 
the part that's a little bit tricky. Does that make sense? So it's not so even though it says plus minus, it just depends on where your angle is, right? It depends on what quadrant it's in and if, if the cosine or sine is either positive or negative and that kind of thing. So that's that. Does that make a little sense? Mm -hmm. So that is your answer. It's kind of ugly looking. Look, you got a square root inside of a square root. Kind of weird looking. But that's one of your choices though, isn't it? On the, that's, it is a multiple choice, and that's one of your choices. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. We're running short on time. I'm trying to find a good one to do. Let's do. Uh, let's do um example three. Oh, this is actually from the. Oh no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'm looking at. Uh, I was looking at fifty eight. Uh, okay, we just did. Let's do this one. Yeah, because I think I'm only going to have time to do one more. Let's do E. Let's do practice E on that lesson. Okay? Because this one is a little bit, um, it can be a little bit weird looking. It's a little different than what we've been doing. So, this is, let's go with that. Relax. I'm going to go a little fast on this just because we need to go about five more Okay, we want to write this as a sum. Um, with the sine and cosine, okay? So it's a product right now, isn't it? They're being multiplied. But I'm going to write this so that I get something plus something else, or minus. When I say sum, it could be a plus or a minus, okay? So I want to rewrite this so it's something plus something else, and all I have are sine and cosines. That's what they want you to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is look at this. I've got, um, let me see, do I have a thing that says just sine times cosine? It says, uh, as a sum containing only sine or cosine. Right. But do I have a trig identity? Oh, I do. Look at the product. Look at the, um, I do have one that says sine of something times a cosine of something. And something different. It's the very last one. It's the product of some identities. You see, it's the very bottom one on the right. Uh, it says this. It's, I'll just write it out for you. It says the sine of a cosine of b is equal to one half of the sine of a plus b. Can we be crazy with having the wrong ones? Sine. Basically, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. well, not this. You might know this um, So this is what we're using right here. You understand why? So now what we're going to do, basically, that's the A, and what's that? That's the B. And so wherever you see A, you're going to put x over 2. Wherever you see B, you're going to put 5x over 2 inside of there. Correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's uh, do that. So it's going to be 1 half. It's going to be the sine of a plus b. So I'm going to go x over 2 plus 5x over 2. And we're going to have to add those up. Plus the sine of a minus b. So it's going to be x over 2 minus 5x over 2. That was pretty simple. That's just plug and chug, right? Take those and just plug them in. So now what I have to do is got to add those things up. So I get the sine of, I'll let you add them up, and it comes out to 3x. And that's actually easy. 1x plus 5x is 6x. 6x over 2 is 3x. Okay. And this would be the sine of, and this would come out, this is 1x minus 5x, which is negative 4x over 2, which is negative 2x. All right. Um, and that's kind of it, actually. We need to distribute the half through here, right? We don't want the. We just want a sum. We just want something plus something else, or something minus something else. So I'll just distribute the one half through this. So it's going to be one half sine of three x 
and then plus one half times the sine of negative 2x. Now you'd think you're done, and I probably would too, but there is one little trig identity with this. Um, look at the odd even identity at the top of your list, right in the middle. You see that? You see the sine of negative x? It's the very top left one. See, it says negative sine x equals the sine of negative x. Negative sine x equals the sine of negative x. So what you're going to do is see where this is negative 2x? This identity right here allows you to take this negative and put it out in front. So what we're going to do is we're going to write it like this. So it's minus, right, 1 half. And then you're just going to keep the 2x there. So that is now written as a sum with either sine or cosine. So that was a little weird, wasn't it? But you see where that comes from right now, don't you? All right? It comes from this thing right here. All right, well, that was plenty, I think, don't you? And um, I, what we didn't finish, I'll try to put that on YouTube and send you a link this week, and um, you can watch this. Um, I'll try to send it early because some of that stuff might be on the test. Right, so you probably want to watch them first before you actually take the test. Okay? All right, have a good week.